So I would like to ask uh, uh, Natasha Lopez uh, Fisher. She is our um, first uh, first speaker today to to start uh, sharing her screen and. Natasha, if you are uh, there, oh, okay, perfect. So if you want to start uh, your sharing your screen, uh, she is a, a, a postdoctoral researcher, <coughs> sorry, at the uh, Center for Family and Population Research at the National University of uh, Singapore. And um, the, um, here, uh, um, she is going to, to present uh, a work um, with the EG uh, correlates of uh, pro-social behaviors in uh, young children. And um, when she's not working, she also likes to explore different cuisines and receipts and uh, meet friends uh, and watch Netflix series, not exactly and necessarily in, in this order. So uh, please um, uh, welcome Natasha and uh, the, the floor is yours. And uh, you're still muted. Okay. okay. Let me just, okay. So everybody is hearing me now? Okay, great. Yes. So thank you, Alberto, for the introduction. And hello, everyone. So again, my name is Natasha Fisher. And today I'll talk about my work named Adventure, Advantages in Equity Awareness in Young Children, uh, the whole of late post positive potential and emotional reactivity. So to begin with the presentation, I want to give some background information and introduce some basic concepts such as morality, fairness, and inequity aversion. So as definition, morality can be understood as the code of shared values, informing about proper conduct within a social group. One of these values is the pursuit of fairness and inequity aversion during social interactions. Fairness may be conceptualized as a way to access whether resources are distributed equally or close to equal among peers, whereas Inequity aversion is the natural tendency to avoid unequal outcomes. These behaviors are present since early childhood, but there is little to none evidence about how they are computed by the brain dur during early ages. Therefore, our goal was to identify how young children perceive moral values. By doing so, we intend to contribute to the to the development of educational interventions tailored according to a child's developmental stage. To achieve this goal, we adopted a child's friendly version of the dictator game task. And in the, our task, each child played the receiver role while the dictator role was played by the computer. This later fact was a no for the child. The dictator was the one in charge to decide how many candies the child should get. Three different offers could be made to the child. Uh, an adventure is an equal offer where the child would get more candies than the dictator. A disadvantage is an equal offer where the child would get less candies than the dictator and a fair offer where both child and dictator received equal or close to equal amount of candies. After, I'm sorry, again here. So after each offer, child was then asked about how he or she was feeling and answers could be very sad, sad, just okay, happy or very happy we recorded the EEG signal during the entire task. We analyzed behavior EEG data from 17 children whose ages ranged from approximately three to six years old. Behavior data was analyzed using a non parametrical analysis of variance and EEG waveforms were analyzed in time domain using multi call approach with cluster-based correction for multiple comparisons. Regarding behavioral responses, we could find that 
preschoolers felt sadder when they received less candies than their peers compared to when they received more or equal amount of candies as their colleagues. In the other hand, they did not report feeling differently when receiving more candies than their peers, comparing to when they received equal or close to equal amount of candies. Regarding the EEG, uh, the EEG data, we could first observe that for early components, children had a statistically significant high EEG amplitude in time intervals corresponding to P100, N100 and N170 ERP components after receiving different types of candies allocations. These ERP components were previously linked to fast visual perception of different kinds of stimuli, such as facial expressions and emotionally charged stimuli. Furthermore, we could observe that for later ERP components, young children may not recognize in having more candies than their peers as something bad due to statistically significant low levels of emotional regulation at early stages. This could be demonstrated by the higher LPP amplitudes after advantageous offers compared to when they had fair offers. Previous studies already demonstrated high LPP amplitudes for emotionally charged stimuli. We could also observe that during the LPP time interval, higher the EEG amplitudes were, higher emotional ratings given the by the participants were as well as it's seen by the regression analysis we did by the right side. So altogether, the results suggest that young children may not recognize a situation where they potentially have an advantage over others as something negative. We also found that their increased emotional reaction to rewards may potentially influence their ability to properly identify unfairness, especially when it's directed towards others. These investigations shed light on how children construct and process moral values and may help to design efficient educational interventions to improve social skills since the very beginning of their development. So if you have further questions about the work I presented here, I will be happy to provide further clarifications and discuss my results. You can also send me an email, which is shown here in this slide, and follow me on Twitter. Thanks very much for the attention. I'm looking forward to hearing your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Natasha, for, uh, for your presentation. And I shared in the, in the chat your, uh, your Twitter uh, handle so the, everyone can uh, follow you on, on Twitter to ask follow-up questions or in general, to follow your uh, your work. So um, we have one question. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we have a question uh, from um, uh, Ilya. Uh, what do you think uh, the N170 reflects about the differences in allocation? Is that a common component in this literature? literature? Yeah, so actually N170, it's, a, it's a more commonly related to facial recognition and actually uh, emotional facial recognition. Uh, in this literature about resource allocation, it's not that common, uh, but there is some authors arguing about the function of early ERPs in social relevant uh, stimuli such as in children. It seems like children, as far as far from as far as I could observe it since children, they have uh, this early ERP is more preeminent than adults, especially when it comes to social stimuli. But it is often overlooked because uh, most of the, not most, but some of the literature, they assume that children, they have the very same time intervals, the very same ERP time intervals as adults, which may be not the case. Uh, so there is some discussion about what is the 
function or what is the role of early versus late ERPs in, in, so, in social stimuli processing in pediatric uh, populations. So there is a, uh, also like a very good review paper about the dual processing of fairness computation. And this, this paper is just about like how the early and late components can address this comp this different uh, appraised the moments of appraisal of moral situations. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it can, it can be. Yeah, yeah, I see the the question. Yeah, it can be it can be different. Actually, there is like some literature. Uh, a paper from the 1980s, uh, around 1980s, showing, for example, that the alpha band in alone from infancy to six years old, it, the ranges are below the common range and ranges as adults, mostly because children, they are still met, uh, having their brain networks forming building up and also the scope and the school it's not so well matured yet so it seems to have some differences across adults and children so it's worthy to investigate this type of influence when you're dealing with pediatric populations thank you thank you for uh, for the answer and uh, thank you Ilya for uh, uh, for the for the questions and I have, a, um, I don't see any further question from the audience, so I have a question myself. So in, um, I was curious about uh, um, the fact that in, in, the, in your study, um, the, the child involved uh, has a, an advantage in, in one case. So he, the, the inequality, let's say, could be uh, advantages or, or disadvantages for him or for her. Um, uh, did you also observe, or someone else observed, uh, if uh, the if uh, uh, children uh, react to inequality toward someone else? So, if he is not directly involved in the in the, in the deal. Yeah, actually, not in my study, but there are some literature saying that children can. Uh, punish the uh, agents of inequality, like they can ostracize or they can they can punish somehow the agents of inequality when when it's directed towards others. It's possible, but this happens mostly with uh, older children, like after six years old, I would say, because there is like a time dependent um, development of morality. So for example, when it comes to inequity aversion, uh, there are some literature already, seen, uh, already showing that children, they mostly exhibit the, the advantage and equity aversion. So they are uh, since early ages, like since 15 months old, for example, they are already avoiding uh, situations where they are having a disadvantage, but they can't, they do not avoid situations when they are having advantage, which is very interesting. This type, because the advantage is inequity, it's somewhat, um, it, it, it's not so intuitive to have like this aversion to, advent to advantageous uh, situations. So this is something learned. And this is something that is just developed after six, seven, eight years old. And it also depends on cultural norms. So to have this type of uh, moral value, it seems that they have to downregulate their own emotion, their own emotion reactivity. So that's why I'm like, I'm showing that it's it's probably it's the case for adults and also probably the case for children. That's really super interesting. Yeah. Really cool. It's, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so uh, since we don't have uh, any further question, I think we can uh, well, thank you again, uh, Natasha, for, uh, uh, for your talk. And uh, if the attendees have further questions, just uh, reach out to her by, on Twitter or uh, by email. Um, so I will then uh, pass.